Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. Joining me today is Amir Pineda from the Miami International Airport. Amir, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Would you mind touching more on your role at, at the airport? Sure. In my current role, I'm the uh, Aviation Cargo Infrastructure Development Advisor for the airport, basically responsible for all things cargo at MIA. Can you touch on what makes the airport special? Absolutely. So cargo has been part of Miami's DNA from the early beginnings. Uh, today, we are the number one airport for international freight and number nine in the world. And also, we are moving today approximately 2.8 million tons of cargo, which you know put us at the premiere of all airports around the world. And we expect to continue to have that role in cargo in the foreseeable future. The, the airport is, is actually the first in the, the Western Hemisphere to be a IATA Pharmaceutical Freight Hub. Can you touch more on that and why it's so special? So Miami International Airport saw the growth in uh, uh, exports of pharma and the importance that it played to the industry. So we, along with IATA and the cargo community, came together and initially got seven companies to become uh, pharma certified, enabling us to become a certified pharma hub. Today we have seven companies. Those include American Airlines, Amerijet, Atlas Air, LATAM, Swissport, DHL, and Huguenago. So together these companies form the, car, the, uh, the pharma hub here at the, at the airport. Now why is that important? And particularly during the COVID time period, we uh, became a distribution point for the COVID vaccines throughout the region and on the national level. So we had uh, COVID vaccines coming to the airport. We knew how to process, how to uh, efficiently move the, the tra uh, and transport the, the pharmaceuticals into the region and particularly to the markets that needed it most, you know, Brazil and, and, uh, and uh, Peru and Colombia and other countries. So it played a, a crucial part during the COVID time period. Today, just to get an idea, we move 19 million tons of cargo of pharma annually. Uh, that translates to $6.6 .6 billion worth of, of cargo for, uh, related to, to pharma. That's a 78% increase over last year. So you can get an idea of the tremendous growth and the value that pharma brings to Miami International. And then why should companies want to ship their products through MIA? Right, so Miami is a great airport for many reasons. So let's start with infrastructure first. So we have nearly 4 million uh, square feet of cargo and uh, warehouse facilities uh, for, for the shippers and, and the handling companies and the airlines. We have over 400,000 square feet of cooling facility at the airport. We're a pharma hub, as I just mentioned. We're a, a foreign trade zone here at the airport. We're open 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. We have customs inspectors that know how to handle perishables. We have everything that basically a shipper would need to, to work at this airport. In addition to last year, a record $65.5 billion worth of trade came to Miami International Airport. So if you want to do trade, if you want to do cargo in the Western Hemisphere, you have to be at Miami International. And then what are the key imports and exports from the airport? For imports, it's perishables. On the export side, it's pharmaceuticals, it's aerospace, it's uh, high-tech, computers and peripherals make up most of our exports. MIA is a gateway to Latin America and the Caribbean. Can you touch more on that as well? Absolutely. So we are the most important gateway in, in Latin America. Today, 83% of all imports from Latin America go through MIA, and 78% of all exports to Latin America go through MIA. So we play a critical part in that. So important that we're considered the perishable hub as well for the United States. So if you look at perishables, 69% of all perishables entering the United States via air come through Miami International Airport, wow. which is a staggering number. So if we break that down into the three major categories, flowers, 80% of all flowers entering the United States come through MIA, 69% of all fruits and vegetables come through MIA, and 58% of all seafood entering the United States come through MIA. Wow. So we're basically the breadbasket for perishables coming out of Latin America through the United States and the world. MIA operates on a 24-7 on-airport CDP dock processing. Can you touch more on that? Absolutely. So as you know, the airport is open 24-7, 365 days a year, and our customs inspectors are some of the best in the world. So we're not, we don't face some of the impediments that other airports have with uh, slots or, or other things that may hinder that 24-hour operation. For the most part, most of our cargo is cleared in four hours or less because of the huge amount of perishables that, that come in. But just as important is the, the working relationship that we have with the federal agency, in particular customs, that does a lot of the, the, the legwork for the clearance of cargo. 
And because of that good working relationship, because of the experience that they have, uh, no other airport really comes uh, close to what we can do uh, at, at MIA. And then can you touch more on how the um, role that D.B. Schenker plays into the airport? Absolutely. So I, I think it's absolutely great that D.B. Schenker decided to make Miami its uh, North American, Latin America headquarters. I think it, it just shows the importance that Miami plays to your organization uh, globally. Um, and, and making Miami that headquarters really makes uh, a big difference, I think, uh, to us here and the community um, and also to the region. And then are there any um, upcoming projects you all have going on that you'd like to share? Yes, we have several. So we've been working with the community uh, for some time now in collaboration to try to form a, uh, what we call an airport cargo community system, which is basically a platform that brings together all of the major stakeholders in the supply chain. Uh, these platforms are available at other airports. We're in the process of implementing it here at the airport, along as, as well as uh, uh, supporting the digitalization uh, that's going on in the industry world, uh, worldwide, and also supporting IATA's uh, mm -hmm. uh, one window uh, concept that uh, they've been pushing for some time. So I, we think that technology is gonna really make the difference in the future, and this is why we're, we're kind of supporting these efforts. Can you touch on the Fly Green project? Absolutely. So this past May, we were voted by uh, Freight uh, Magazine, uh, the, the number one sustainable cargo airport of the year, which is a great honor for us. And this was uh, due to the fact that we've been working with FPNL for the last several years on a, on a very large sustainable project here at the airport, which translates to over $100 million in energy savings for the airport on an annual basis. Perfect. And then last year, you all were VIC approved. Can you touch more on that as well? Right, so the VIC project is our benchmark project. VIC stands for Vertical Integrated Cargo Community. It is a five-story, fully automated uh, infrastructure uh, that will encompass uh, robotics, mechanics, automated systems that will enable the facility to move more than four million, four and a half million tons of cargo on an annual basis. Once completely com uh, completed, uh, it will employ more than 8,000 employees at the facility. It will be sustainable uh, on its own, and it will be the benchmark project for this community and for the Western Hemisphere. You're looking at a $2, $2 billion uh, project, um, and it will be the largest infrastructure project in the Western Hemisphere. Well, thank you so much, Amir, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much. And thank you all for tuning in.